Hi folks. Hi folks. Are we good? Are we good? Okay. Evening folks, hope you're doing well. Uh, I hope you had a good week as well. Um, just about recovered from Cologne. I um, uh, don't know how many of you guys and girls tuned in uh, to Cologne and managed to stick with us all night. I know a lot of you did. And um, of course, there were a lot of people popping in and out, but it was a fantastic show. I cannot say thank you enough to uh, Marcel and Torsten out there at uh, Cologne Cargo, the cargo division of uh, Cologne Bonn Airport, um, who stuck with us all the way through. Um, and great to meet up with a, a few other guys as well. Um, uh, Jan, I think it was, from uh, UPS and um, uh, the, the, a great guy from, um, from uh, MNG Services. It was Burak, I think it was. Um, uh, but great to meet up, up with all those guys. It was literally action all the way through. Uh, one big apology, I have to say, uh, on behalf of, of us, but it was a technical issue that uh, halted uh, the proceedings. But fortunately, it was right at the point when there once all the aircraft were in it's a it's a it's a very well-oiled operation out there um once all the aircraft in are in uh, the the actual distribution points or the split points within the uh within the the, the cargo hub itself go into action um where all the prop parcels are broken down all the freight that comes off those aircraft goes into the warehouses uh, gets split down and uh, uh, um, parted off into individual uh, sectors where it might be loaded onto intercontinental aircraft onto trucks um, going out all across the country and of course overseas as well but um, just um, amazing to see and and watch and be with them very very tiring I have to say got to the airport uh, around about three o'clock in the morning um, and uh, actually a little bit earlier than that about quarter to three luckily there was a cafe that opened at 3 a.m uh, which uh, was doing fantastic coffees and pastries and uh, so but I had a four hour wait um, at the airport then we had uh, believe it or not a, um, a malfunctioning instrument uh, it was one of the backup instruments but uh, the ironic thing was that we'd been seeing the uh, Lufthansa Technic uh, guys in their in their uh, vehicles um, doing the rounds uh, around the cargo hub um, uh, with um, with aircraft asking for, uh, for, for for maintenance checks and so on and so forth and the ironic thing was that we had one of those guys come up onto the flight deck and uh, very quickly fix the issue that we had on the instrument um, so we made it back to Heathrow in time eight o'clock yesterday morning um, it was a real tiring couple of days I have to say because of by uh, last night I was knackered because I didn't want to sleep during the day obviously so uh, we're all fresh now and um, spoken to the bot uh, via email to um, to Marcel um, and uh, going to be putting some stuff together for them going to be putting together uh, a compressed edit of the evening about nine hours in total we were live for and we'll obviously put that together as a premiere uh, for our um, executive members and up uh, initially before we put it out to the main audience like we always do lots of other things planned overseas as well don't forget um, fortunately we've had uh, I've had a, 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 a response from our friends out in Poland uh, for the Polish um, Aviation Museum and uh, we're going to be going out there possibly uh, beginning of November around about the beginning to the middle of November they've got a new exhibition that they're putting together um, and they're just in the throes of, of, of finalizing that right now so uh, we've been invited out there very much look forward to going out there and seeing those guys um, we do enjoy our museum tours and, and you uh, folks um, seem to enjoy them as well we've made the decision ladies and gents based on the fact that we, we had to weigh everything up here um, and the simplicity is that is this that we've done quite a lot of stuff with the Virgin 747 retirements. There's more stuff to come. Don't get right, don't, don't get me wrong. We've already filmed Barbarella going out of uh, out of Manchester, um, and so to get her going out again would be a, a bit of a sort of like a, what's going on here? I thought the last one was a, a retirement flight. Why are you doing it again? Um, but uh, she's flying out to Vegas tomorrow, um, and uh, she's with a, a relief crew I believe that um, 
that uh, Stuart and Carl will be flying on the aircraft because they're going to be taking the aircraft from Vegas to Pinal, um, uh, where she will be um, either stored or broken up. I'm not sure which one it is. I think stored at this point in time before she goes over to Atlas Air. Um, so uh, that also uh, based on the fact that they'll be on 09 operations uh, tomorrow uh, up to a certain point. There's a possibility we're not sure that the wind may change, uh, the directions may change onto a westerly. Uh, that being the case, it would just be a bit of a, a crazy um, time for us uh, ru rushing around all over the place trying to catch this one go out. Also visibility, folks. Um, as we've uh, discussed in the past, um, Manchester Airport are very relaxed on, um, on what they've been doing with Virgin, got a great relationship with Virgin Atlantic, of course, up at Manchester um, and continue to do so. Um, so for them to request, put a request in for, for them to do a wing wave, it's like knock yourselves out, folks. Um, and also the great uh, collaboration that they've got with Manchester means that they can do that taxi. They can come past all the spectators. Uh, to give them a, a photo opportunity, um, get waves from the, 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 the pilots and everything. So, you know, that specific um, unison uh, uh, um, uh, uh, relationship that they've got with, with, um, with Manchester works really well. And um, we're obviously planning to do more stuff with Virgin up at Manchester uh, up, uh, at some point in the future. Um, just waiting for things to be finalised on that. So we're going we're gonna to do tomorrow, we're going to let Barbarella go off. Um, on her own because the chances are at Heathrow they're very very strict and understandably so um, purely I think more based on the um, the restrictions that they have in terms of the local communities um, you can't sort of like request that they do a low level departure because they have to stick within certain guidelines um, and that's totally understandable wing wave isn't going to happen at London Heathrow either um, and uh, from a distance from two miles away you're very unlikely to see the lights flash who knows as well, we've got a different crew on board tomorrow, might not be as uh, um, uh, uh, agreeable on doing stuff for us. But also uh, the fact that if they're on 09 departures and we're on the Hilton Gardening, she'll be a mile away, basically. She'll be nearly a mile away uh, at the point where she rotates and hits the very low cloud base, because that's what we're expecting tomorrow, folks. Pretty horrendous um, conditions. So weighing all that up against the other stuff that we put out to you folks the other day about what would you prefer? Would you rather see um, uh, the Virgin 747 go out? Or would you rather see uh, English Electric Lightning engine start and engine run and uh, a Shaf uh, Shackleton, Avro Shackleton um, engine start and run? Um, so we've, we've, we've weighed it all up and we've, we've decided that we're going to do the Gatwick Aviation Museum tomorrow, folks. I've been down there today, uh, spent a couple of hours down there um, with, um, with some of the guys down there. Really knowledgeable, very, very um, passionate about what they do down there. It took them the best part of um, uh, 12 years or maybe even more uh, to build this English Electric Lightning from scratch. Literally, it was like an Airfix model. As Peter told me earlier on when we were discussing it, it was an Airfix model. And these guys have put this thing back, restored it right back to running condition. It is really impressive. The plan is to run both engines tomorrow. Uh, don't forget that these old aircraft, these, um, the, these ground run aircraft can be a little bit temperamental. So, um, you know, the, the plan is to run both engines. Sometimes they might just uh, be able to run one because the other one just doesn't want to start. Um, the Shackleton as well. Um, we'll be, we'll have two cameras. We'll have a, an onboard camera, so where the flight engineer's panel is behind the co-pilot, uh, the, the co-pilot, uh, we'll see him doing the engine starts on the panel, um, like we did, kind of like we did with the Vulcan, if you were with us that time. Um, and I'll be outside on the van, um, bird's eye view of the two aircraft as they do the engine runs. But as well as that, when we get there in the morning, going to do a run through the uh, through the museum. These are all de dependent upon times and weather and so on and so forth. But the plan is to give you a full run through the through, through the museum. It's not a massive museum, but it is very, very good. It's like they've got some great exhibits there. Um, and it's all it's all about restoration in that place as well. So you'll get to see all of that up close. Um, we'll run through the English Electric Lightning. We'll be up close right up next to it um, and, and get a real good close look at stuff that a lot of people are like, wow, I didn't know that. 
really blimey oh wow you know we'll get all of that kind of stuff um they've got also uh, the front end both of these lightning well, the, the, the lightning that's in one piece so to speak they've also got another front end of a lightning um well front top end cockpit area of a lightning that um these these particular aircraft went to a um were bought by a, a film production studio um fortunately these two made it back uh, whereas the other ones got made into um, sort of like attack spaceships uh, for a sci-fi uh, film that never made it to the cinema, went straight out on video. But we'll talk about that more about that tomorrow. Kind of like one of those really cheesy sort of like you know sci-fi movies, which uh, which uh, I kind of like to watch, you know, because you're like really. Um, but uh, yeah, so we'll be there. We'll see all of that. We'll get to see and hear the engine runs. We'll do a, a real a run right the way through. We'll walk right the way through the Shackleton which trust me folks it's original in there and it is really really interesting some of the stuff um you know some of the equipment uh dating all the way back to the to to to, to the lancaster bombers uh, which is where this uh aircraft original not this particular aircraft but the design originated from the lancaster design um but uh but it's really interesting so much great information hopefully we're going to get peter taking us through tomorrow if we don't we've got somebody else on on standby um as well as we've got dave who's going to take us through the lightning everything about it uh, he was actually there from the moment it arrived in in all its its crates uh so he knows that aircraft inside out uh, so it'll be a very interesting show uh for you all you folks out there who are into historics um it's it's a great little museum and uh we'll be there from uh, i'll be there arriving around about 8 a.m we should be alive by no later than 9 a.m so set your clocks for at least eight o'clock tomorrow morning and um we'll look forward to seeing you there tomorrow at the gatwick aviation museum look them up on the on the web folks uh you'll see the shackleton um on the home page and uh, read up on it um and we'll see you there tomorrow morning uh, around between 8 and 9 a.m. for a full show at the Gatwick Aviation Museum. Have a good night. Enjoy yourselves. Drink responsibly. Uh, keep social distancing and uh, look after the animals as well. See you tomorrow, folks. Take it easy. Bye bye. Did you cut that, Jilly? Oh. <laughs>